The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-445-1044. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon from TFNN. Welcome to the April 5th, the fabulous Friday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. How about we have an extraordinary one? And of course, the easiest way to do that, it's to always remember that life, life is happening for us, not, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Today, you and I, we get to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We get to go figure out what the bulls and the bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I just past one o'clock in the afternoon. I want you to know that I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But most importantly, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone, dial on in 877-927-6648. If you can't dial in, we've got you covered. Let those fingers do the walking. You can send me an email, steve at tfnn.com. Inside the subject heading, please be kind enough to put radio show question. Of course, that tiger's den of ours. Any ping will do. So let's go ahead and uh, get this uh, show kicked off. Uh, of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Uh, right now, we got the Dow up 18 points, the S and P up nine. Uh, so it's green, meaning green across the board. Uh, Percentage-wise, the leader is Russell 2000. That's up 12. Uh, points, that's uh, three quarters of a percent. Gold's up two bucks. Silver is basically flat out here. Light sweet crude up 53 cents. Let's go out to Costa Rica and speak with Kay Rico. Kay Rico, how are you? Nice to hear from you. And my apology for not covering uh, DT&E like you had asked me to a couple days ago. <laughs> it's so good to hear your voice. Everything's <laughs> cool, man. Everything's cool. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, yeah, yeah, but uh, that, but that's okay. That's so. So, how are things in uh, Costa Rica? Well, I want to give you and your great listeners a quick Mother Nature update, if Perfect. I may. You may go right ahead. The ring of fire around our globe is on fire with volcanic activity, and major, major eruptions are happening two of them here not serious i won't uh, you know get into any hyperbole but in mexico city there's a monster volcano that many many centuries ago obliterated that whole area and i'm talking about massive destruction thousands and thousands of lives were lost what's happening right now is that volcano there i can't pronounce the name but it's extremely active right now, and it's it's causing uh, the line the line of, of volcanic activity around the Ring of Fire is erupting everywhere. So this can create also connecting into earthquakes. Yes, yes, of course, of course, it's, yeah. It's it's serious. It's beyond serious, and uh, you know there was anyway, a, there was a period of time, uh, K Rico. Um, Months ago, many months ago, when it seemed like there were earthquakes, not earthquakes, but there, were vol there was volcanic activity, you know, happening every week or so, someplace new. And, and Why? Either the, either the coverage <coughs> has died off or it had died off a little bit, bit but, <coughs> excuse me, you're saying it's, it's picking up or it really hasn't died off. I just haven't been reading the right articles. It, it, it really has been covered up, not died off. I'm going to use it blatantly straightforward, covered up, because... It's not Trump bashing. It doesn't create excitement, and it's not newsworthy for ratings. But God forbid, when Mother Nature really is ready to attack, in my heart of hearts, Steve, and I write this about the trilogy in the book we're going to be self-publishing in uh, late uh, uh, August, 
yeah. or earlier in, in late uh, in late July. The point is, Mother Nature is above us all, and we're all connected once Mother Nature makes her statement. And I'm very sincere. I, I think there's a statement going to be made in the next, I'm going to say by August, the end of August, I think that Mother Nature, the Ring of Fire, Yellowstone National Park, the Mexico City, it's going to yeah. happen. Something's going to give a message to the world that we're not respecting the world's climate, the world's the world's treasure beneath us, the world's treasure above us. We're just in sure. serious uh, sure. situations okay. that well, that's could well, look. That that that's uh, kind of leads us right into because you're talking about energy here. So why don't we? <laughs> and so you heard that here first, folks, but. Uh, Kay Rico has been a longtime listener here at TFNN, a longtime holder of uh, the Detroit Edison. Uh, right now, the uh, name is DTE Energy. And um, so, and, and you did send me an email, but since we've got you live, tell the folks, you know, how is it that I can help you with regard to this uh, equity? It's been in the family okay. since, since before Edison, right? Yeah. <laughs> My, my grandparents bought it for my mother uh, about 15 years be before uh, the World War II. That's great. And, yeah, that's a great and story. So, so um, my brother and I have been studying it. I, I, he found out about some options for, like, uh, uh, July for the 130, and there was a lot of activity. I believe it was July. And then the uh, ex-dividend was um, um, March 15th. And now the earnings are coming um, April 23rd, approximately. I just look at this chart and keep saying, well, pullback has been, not, uh, you know, necessary for a little bit of uh, levity here. It's just going up and up and up. So this activity right now, I was wondering your opinion. Okay. So, you know, because because you're such a, a long-term Holder, I just want to start with uh, with the monthly time frame, even though we're just a few days into the month of April. And one okay. of the things that uh, that it has been doing uh, has been a rising with less and less energy. Now I'm looking at a monthly time frame chart here, and uh, depending on where the close is this month, but if it were a close, for example, below 120.54, that could signal a deeper retracement. The the number, the range here on a monthly basis for UK Rico, I would say, is between 115.65. In 120, in 120, we'll just call it 120. That's the range. That's the ring of fire for Detroit Edison on a monthly time frame. Because if there were to be a close below that, not that that says jettison and get out, but it would speak to a deeper retracement. 110 could be a target or even 99.60. Now, it's early in the month, so I don't know if that's really what's going to come to fruition. What I do know is last week on a weekly time frame generated a topping signal, the type of topping signal where there should be some pullback. And how we know that, K. Rico, is uh, what we're looking at here, what has identified the last two out of, out of what we'll call last two out of four tops right now, and not referring to the, the band out there, has been this Tommy DeMarc setup nine count. And you had another one that occurred last week. Now, we're about to go to break, but please uh, hold on if you can. We'll come back. We'll further oh, take yeah, a look yeah. at the... We'll further take a look at I'm Detroit home. Edison with K Rico in Costa Rica. We'll be right back. All right. Thank you. The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. The Taz Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of Taz Market Profile, the Taz Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. 
Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the TAS Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at TAS has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the TAS Order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the TAS Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website, you can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. Uh, we're on the line with K Rico in Costa Rica, and we are taking a look at Detroit Edison. DTE is the uh, ticker symbol. And what we're doing right now is we are studying the uh, weekly time. Uh, whoops, I put up the daily. Let me put the monthly back up here. We'll get to the daily, but let's look at the weekly. We were talking about the weekly, and one of the one of the patterns that we noticed here, folks. Well, first, when markets typically make highs of significance, there's going to be a decent uh, retracement. Uh, could be a correction, 10 percent. Could be um, the bear market scenario, 20% or more. Um, in the case, it does it typically does it with the roads momentum indicator signal. In the case of the high that was made out here in December 2017, it was really both. This Tommy DeMarc set up nine count. It was on count number eight. And K Rico, when we look at this chart here, highs are typically highs or lows. Uh, changes in trend will typically occur on bar eight, nine, or the bar after bar nine. And this system here takes a look at on a move higher or lower, and let's say in this case here, the move higher, takes a look at the current bars close, weekly chart, and compares it to the close of the bar four bars earlier. And if you get nine successive closes above, in this case here, because we're taking a look at that possible topping pattern out here, it says be careful because it can, you can see a change in kind It's kind of like running, um, you know, uh, the, I don't know, a sprint of some sort. Uh, and it takes a lot of energy. And when you're done with that sprint, like, you know, Hussein Bolt, uh, you know, he, he's, even though he's got a lot of energy, he needs to rest up. So in this case here, last week, Mark, the week after the ninth bar out there and suggested that, okay, prepare for a potential pullback on a weekly basis. Right now, price is testing my little green line. That green line is actually known as the oscillator and change line. And what that's doing is that is a kind of a line of demarcation to tell you when just a retracement is really just a retracement. Price will pull back, test that, and bounce off of that level. It's sitting on it right now. So it closed below 123.10 um, would suggest that we would see a further retracement. Now, retracement to where? On this chart here, it gives us a price figure of 111.91. That's this little red solid line. It's the low of that nine count series out there. So that's one possible level of support. But luckily for you, we also have our TAS market profiles. And it's not until support gets broken that there's any real seriousness about any kind of pullback or retracement. 
In the case of the weekly chart for the TAS market profiles for Detroit Edison, prices traded above 121. 121 is the top of the profile. That was old resistance. It's possible, K Rico, that that becomes new support. Hasn't been tested yet. We don't know. If there were a close below 121, you would anticipate, and there would be nothing wrong with this. That's just like level one of support. The ultimate level of support right now would be 115.71. A close below that could signal something else. But we're not there, and there's no reason for us to go there just yet. And that's what the weekly time frame chart shows us. The daily time frame has a bottom of its profile box at 122.15. So not until there's a close below that um, is there really anything to, I don't want to use the word worry about, but to, uh, you know, maybe have you focus a little bit more. But but you the stock has been in the name for so long I think the daily chart is just a lot of noise um, for you, don't don't you? Uh, Steve, you're the expert. I'm listening to you intently, and at the same time, I told my brother, you know, we've had this thing in the family. Let's not get greedy. Let's wait for the earnings. If the earnings really pop, let's try to get out after the pop. Really, because I mean, this is really a great looking. This is this is the ideal stock chart. Uh, from the 2009 bottom, and just looking at the monthly, I mean, really, this thing, uh, you know, which was 30 bucks, uh, it's trading at 123, so you know, about a 400 percent move just in that time period. Just look at the beautiful stair step approach here, and the cool thing about this monthly time frame chart that you're looking at is you can notice that any pullback just so that you and other viewers out there can understand the power of these profiles that we take a look at here. On a monthly basis, all we've ever seen since 2009 has been pullbacks to test the bottom of a profile, which is the ultimate level of support here. And right now, that level is 99.60. Granted, that's a fairly significant swing from the 123.07 where we're trading at. But shoot, it's well above the top of the profile right now. So that's really not in question. But the point that I really wanted to make here, especially from a longer term standpoint, is this stock chart looks very bullish. I, it's, it's really, it's a beautiful thing. If we take a look, for example, Hey, Rico, back in November of 2017, price had gotten above the top of the box. Well, it finally failed in January 2018, but the pullback was just simply to the bottom. And the bottom at that stage was 96.02. Granted, price got down in uh, June of 2018 down to 94.25, uh, but it, it, the closing price was above the bottom of that profile. So long term. In, you know, if you're looking to sell because you just want to sell, then maybe you look towards a daily time frame chart and look for something. I don't see it just yet. I see what's going on in a daily time frame is nothing more than ordinary at this stage here. It's actually had six successive sessions. We looked at the nine count on the weekly chart. It's had six successive sessions. Uh, where the close has been the close below the bar four bars earlier. Today looks like it'll be number seven. On a daily chart, number eight is Monday, Tuesday's nine, Wednesday would be the bar after nine. So it could be next week when you actually see the next bottom in this, if this pattern plays out. We don't know if this pattern will play out because you have to have those nine successive closes. So just because today may be bar seven, that pattern could go away in a heartbeat. Does that kind of make sense? Well, yeah, if you, it will make sense of, of your knowledge. I'm just listening intently. Does the, the option action that my brother discovered regarding the 130 price tag for, I believe, uh, June or July, is that something to look at of, of somebody might know something? Because Detroit Edison, I think this earnings report for the January through April could be very strong because Detroit was very cold and they probably took in a lot of money and money means earnings and earnings means maybe good stock action. Well, the 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 I can't get to the 130 price level. That doesn't because the actual level I could come up with is probably much higher than that. So, um, in, oh. in what I <laughs> what I mean, huh? Here's here's what I mean. If we just do A B equals C D analysis, we would look at the swing point on a weekly basis from November the week that began November 12, 2018. There were five million shares on that week. 
when that level was crossed, it was the week of February 18th, and it was 5.1 million shares. What that represents to me, K. Rico, is a confirmed A to B equals CD to the upside. To give you an idea where that price projection would be, and again, it's you know you said the 130, and I could visually see, oh, I can't get to 130 because I'd be more like 133 to 141 to 150. Um, so wow. my A to B equals CD pattern says this is a confirmed A to B equals CD looking at the weekly time frame chart that should take price eventually to 133.97, maybe 141.24. So I hope that helps you out. Thank you. It does. It does. And when, um, when we get ready to launch our, our book and our web page, uh, I'll be talking to you. Um, I'm going to send great. an email. If there's that's anything that's I can do great. on my web page to help, uh, help you and your crew, uh, it will be my pleasure. All righty. Hey, thanks, K. Rico. We're going to hard break. Great to talk to you. Have a, a great weekend out there. K. Rico in Costa Rica. Steve Rhodes will be Thank right back. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, six, and three months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of tfnn.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow 26406 up 21 points. S&P is up uh, 10. So uh, a couple of questions. Uh, one in the den, Jay was asking about uh, TAS market profiles, if there was anything new. The answer there, there is not. The new information, Jay, that we have at this stage here is that the Russell 2000 has taken out the resistance, at least at this stage. It's 130. I don't know what the close looks like. But right now it's trading above the top of its bearish structured daily profile 1577 70 
Nothing more bullish than a failed bearish pattern. This would suggest Russell 2000 equity futures contract headed for its February 25th high out there. The high there is 1607, the low 1594. Today, the high so far 1587. So that level hasn't been uh, tackled with. It's above uh, the weekly because of the symbol change from, uh, uh, geez, I forget what it used to be for the Russell. Uh, doesn't matter, but because of the symbol change months ago, I can't get, I can't provide you with the uh, weekly, no, the weekly I can't, but the monthly and the quarterly numbers, like I can on the other contracts here. So what do we know about the Russell? It's broken above resistance, a bearish structure, uh, market profile, that's very bullish. Now, the ES Mini is sitting right now, basically right at potential resistance, potential resistance being its monthly profile. That's a little right, white line across my screen, 28.92. It's trading at 28.93. Closing above that would be very bullish today. So watch 28, the number to watch, 28.92. That's the top of the weekly profile. If the ES Mini closes above that, uh, I can't find anything bearish for you or anybody else out there. Uh, now, we can't control what the market's going to do next, but we can take a look at what, what are the charts telling us? Where's support and resistance? What is it telling us? If we take a look at the NQ out here, the NQ above the quarterly. Now, granted, the quarter ended last week on Friday. Um, and last week on Friday, I think price closed just below. But uh, neither here nor there. It appears that the NQ is targeting 77.78. That's the top of its monthly profile. Um, assuming nothing else uh, transpires where we need to reinterpret the chart. But as of 132 in the afternoon, there's nothing, there's no piece of information out here to suggest otherwise. Not at least in my sets of tools out here for what that's worth. That if you take a look at the Dow, and this is where things are really kind of interesting. So, Jay, you like market profiles, as do many. Um, we see the power of them as K. Rico, you and I, we were looking at the Detroit Edison's chart, right? Let's say you're a long-term investor and you just looked at that DTE chart and you said, hey, even though you had to go through some volatility, that's normal, uh, you at least knew where the line in the sand was drawn from a long-term investor standpoint, there hasn't been a close below a monthly bottom of the box since the 2000, it probably even before that, but at least since the 2009 bottom out here. And that would say long-term investors would stay until there were a close below that. Uh, if we take a look at the, uh, the Dow, uh, so trying to carry out this theme of our market profiles useful, we know the answer is yes. Well, the Dow is above daily, the top of the box or resistance above weekly, which was 26.144, above monthly, which was 25.928, above quarterly, 25.855. So what do you think about that? What do you think about that? Now, and we're not even to the new all-time highs, but with regard to market profile information, the Dow has just simply cleared all hurdles out there. So if we take a look at the Dow chart here on a daily time frame, is there anything I can say that uh, needs to be watched with regard to that? And the answer is, yeah, of course there is. Well, not of course, but but there is. And, well, that's the five-hour chart. I didn't want to grab the five-hour chart. That wasn't my intention. Not that we don't have to, but it's really the daily time frame chart that uh, we're looking at out here. So here's kind of something interesting. Uh, you No, I think this is a pattern that I drew in here, and we're really pretty close to it. Uh, it, whoops, let me just, uh, I had it up just a tad higher. It's this little butterfly pattern that we have out here inside of the uh, Dow Equity Futures contract on a daily time frame. Price has also been rising to a less relative energy. Today is going to be day, day number seven, maybe Monday, day number eight, and maybe that goes ahead and confirms this potential butterfly sell pattern. It's in place right now, the butterfly sell. What's not in place is some signal to generate some type of reversal signal for you and I. So it's not there yet. And that says price can continue higher out here. Daily time frame chart. Remember, price is above all profiles, so no reason for us, and there's no bearishness out here for us to really pay attention to. Just a cautionary sign out here. But uh, just because we have this cautionary sign, that doesn't mean that we're going to see a market turn. 
Price is above resistance. The Dow is free to run, so to uh, speak. Now, what else is it that we can look at out here for where prices may be targeting? Well, if we take a look at the ES Mini. So the ES Mini, not only has it traded into the monthly and really the quarterly profile area, we can also see that prices made its way to its daily horizontal trading range, 28.98. At that level, uh, over the course of time, we've seen 22 closes at approximately 22.98 out there. Looks like we may get a, th a 23rd with today being that day. I don't know how the market's going to end, but no reason for me. I don't see anything just yet to suggest otherwise, but uh, there's still uh, several hours left in the uh, trading session out here. But if price clears, 28.98 says you're back to the all-time highs. You're back up to the 29.51 level up there. That's the weekly horizontal trading range. So, yes, the ES Mini is up at resistance. That's why it's really important to watch the ES Mini uh, right now because we've got, in essence, uh, two or three resistance zones out here. If we take a look at the NQ, well, the NQ has made its way up to its monthly horizontal trading range level. It did that a couple days ago. Hasn't overtaken the highs from a few days ago. I'm referring to the NQ. This is a daily time frame chart and that resistance level, excuse me, was 76.71. If we come back here and take a look at the uh, Dow, because the Dow, when you are above all resistance, uh, TAS profiles and so forth, boy, then you really want to make sure you have your horizontal trading ranges out here. And 26.607 is the next one for the uh, Dow. So it looks uh, very, uh, still looks very bullish out here. If we take a look at what's going on inside the New York Stock Exchange, it's advanced decline oscillator. That happens to be the center panel. That is trading out at 105.18. Uh, for all intents and purposes, looks like this is headed up to the plus 150 level. When it gets to plus 150, then we'll have some type of indication as to uh, because that's where you can that's where you start to hit the overbought reading inside the advanced decline oscillator. It's also if you get a turn down right below 150, that can lead to something more than just a normal little pullback out here. Not the fearful kind. Just something to be watching. Of course, you and I, and thanks for listening in at this time slot, even though the last two days I was taping the show from 8 to 9. Uh, but hopefully that uh, helped uh, because the information that I provided early in the morning was useful in the afternoon. Well, one of those things you and I have been watching is a spot volatility index. And the key level is 1288. It's traded at 1294. The question is, where does the spot volatility index close? Today, below 1288, and this market should continue to zoom, zoom, zoom. We'll be right back. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. 
Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, uh, folks. Let's go to uh, to the emails out here. We've got one from Alex. Alex is writing in about ticker symbol FBC and, in essence, quite asking, you know, where is this thing headed to? So if we take a look at uh, this is Flagstar Bank Corp, by the way, and uh, I want to focus in right now on the weekly time frame chart for you. And uh, this right now on a weekly basis looks like it is going to close above the top of its uh, profile. That level was 33.26. It's at 34.38 out here. The, uh, the, the B point of an A to B equals CD pattern uh, would be the week of March the 4th. 1.4 million shares. You're at 1.3 million shares on a daily basis. Uh, and volume is relatively light. It does about 150,000 shares. So it looks like it might come up just a tad short. 1.4, you're at 1.1.32. 1. Uh, it's going to be close. It's going to be close. Either way, though, even if it's unconfirmed, this could have an A to B equals CD price target. We'll give you what that is out here. The one to one on this takes you to 38.58. The one to 1.272, 4075. So that is a possibility. But here's what you know from a weekly standpoint. I know you had uh, said you had uh, asked about this stock last week. Last week was running into resistance, the top of that profile. This week it has cleared that on a weekly basis as well. One of the other things that this thing appears to be doing is uh, closing above a uh, Tommy DeMarc setup trend line. That was from the week of August 24th, 2018. That is this uh, solid green line. That is an indication that this wants to change trends. If we take a look at how this equity makes highs and makes lows, it uses that Rhodes Momentum indicator signal out here. So that's a reason to throw that A to B equals CD pattern out there. Where is the detour sign for FBC? The only detour sign that I see right now is that today is going to be day number nine of that setup. And on day number nine, uh, either today or Monday, if there's going to be a change in trend, this is when it would occur out here. So it, it sounded like from your email, you're getting ready to jump on board and ride this thing higher out there. I would say, okay, go ahead and do it. But maybe, maybe wait until Tuesday. Wait to see if this nine count gives you some type of uh, pullback out here, nine or ten. Um, so that's really, really just Monday. So waiting till Tuesday, if price is trading above the high of uh, today or the high of Monday, then that pattern is void. And, you know, um, go ahead, head to it, because uh, I've seen breakout on the weekly basis and I don't have anything else to suggest that this thing will not move higher. Uh, so hope that helps you out. Uh, thanks for writing in. Uh, we've got uh, Susanna uh, in Canada. Susanna wants to take a look at 
Would you please run your analysis for the GDX? Okay, so if we take a look at the GDX, happy to do that uh, for you. On the GDX, the key level that it needs to clear, nice day yesterday, no doubt about that. Um, the key level that it needs to clear is, uh, Susanna, is going to be 22 59. It's trading out at 2242. Closing back above 2259, Stevie's green line will uh, set it back towards a uh, bullish mode, uh, preparing to tackle the 327 high out there. That price point is 2338. Um, we can see here, just simply from a daily standpoint, each of these pullbacks out here, we've seen where buyers have stepped in. What I'm referring to, and we can keep going back, you can see the higher bottoms so far that the GDX is making out here. Just simply come back to November 2018, bullish engulfing bottom. Morning star out here, December the 1st. Rising window, gap to the upside, January 26th. Another higher bottom, this little piercing candle on March 8th. Um, you've got this little bull sash candle on March 21st, kind of a retest of that level. Bullish engulfing candle on April the 5th out here. What it needs to prove to you uh, is closing above Stevie's Greenland. That's one place to look at, 2259. Now, 2274 happens to be the top of a brand new daily profile. That formed today. And so if we take a look at that box, support should be 2195. And resistance, uh, just 2195, it's trading at its point of control. So it's at an area where both buyers and sellers believe this is where the stock uh, for this ETF is fairly valued. Uh, it is a bullish structure, bearish structured box, meaning that center line closer to the top at 2274. So closing above 2274, it's different than the figure I gave you, 2259. But that's okay. We're just taking this one step at a time. 2274 is really the number that you want to see the GDX uh, move above. But what we've seen here is a series of higher lows and you can see where the bulls have run in each time to uh, help protect that bottom so uh, you're asking for an entry on the long side out here um, well because it's below the green line and you've got a new profile you're at the point of control bearish structure i'd say wait for 2195 uh, or close above the 2274 mark out here. I don't know if right now is the right reward risk based upon what you and I are looking at out here. Um, and I don't have anything else, let's say in a daily, uh, you know, the monthly doesn't really apply to us right now. I don't see anything from a weekly standpoint to suggest otherwise, but um, so Susanna, I hope that helps you out with regard to the GDX. Uh, Sean writes in, Sean M., and uh, wants to take a look at uh, SLB. Is that Schlumberger, SLB, the uh, ticker symbol out there? We tell you, that is. How about that for a memory? So Schlumberger doesn't say what Sean is looking for. But here's what we know. I think this is what we know. And looking at the charts out here, what we know is that it looks like Schlumberger is headed up towards uh, 4884. That's if it can clear its monthly point of control out here. That's where the high, this is where the month, this is where price has found resistance. Really, it's found resistance in this level for the last three months, last two months, including now this month out here. That level is 45.38. If price can clear 45.38, then what it's going to contend with is 48.84. Now, that's a monthly time frame chart that we're looking at, but boy, it provides us with great information. Pretty good odds right now that 48.84 is going to be hit. We say that because price is above the weekly profile, but here you can see the consolidation on a weekly basis. But it's above resistance, 41.37. Um, so that's a beautiful thing. It is above the top of the daily profile, Schlumberger, that is. If we take a look at uh, what else can we see out here? This is moving in towards the swing point area from uh, February 20th, 8.5 million shares. Last time price was up there was 7 million shares just a few days ago, April the 2nd. Today, good volume as well. Um, it's got about 5.5 million shares with still a few hours to go. So uh, Schlumberger, although really in a consolidation, um, and that's the truth, uh, that's after price gapped up 
way back in January of this year. So the consolidation pattern, the nice thing about that is you can you can you can pretty much use uh, what would you use as the consolidation? Probably something like this, I would say it would be about the uh, yeah, I'd say that. So what you're looking for, the upside here if this breaks from a consolidation standpoint, let's see, can I do this? in just the next few seconds out here. It's going to give you a price uh, approximate of about 50 buckaroonies. Currently trading at 45.34. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. That was Schlumberger. S-L-B. Look oh, great. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. It's amazing to think that Tom O'Brien started his weekly gold report 17 years ago with the first issue published April 7th, 2002, when gold was trading at under $300 per ounce. Gold peaked at more than $1,900 in 2011, and after spending many years consolidating at lower prices, gold may be poised for its next big run. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, South African rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. As of April 1st of this year, the Gold Report currently has eight active positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 8% for each open trade. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your Gold Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't let gold's next big run pass you by. Sign up today. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated folic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. This is David White. Stay tuned because coming up next is the Power Trading Hour right here on TFNN. Welcome back. Uh, last question coming in is about emerging markets, and the question is what to do, what to do, what to do. Do I think it's a good long-term investment was the question out here. And uh, so to and that came in earlier and I just forgot to get to it, so my apology there. Here's a chart, this is a weekly chart that we're looking at with regard to emerging markets out here, and um, and we're comparing emerging markets to the U.S. dollar index. The bottom panel shows you either whether this is directionally correlated or inversely correlated. When the bars are at the bottom, it's inversely correlated, meaning the U.S. dollar index is moving higher then emerging markets should head lower and vice versa out there. So really to answer the question, do you think that the U.S. dollar in, do you think that emerging markets are a good thing to invest in long term? You would have to answer the question, well, 
uh, what do you think is going to take place in the currency world out here? I think that's the most important question for you. If we take a look at the U.S. dollar index, this is a monthly chart for the U.S. dollar index. You can see that it's trading right now at 97.03. That's really trading right on, on a monthly basis, on one of its key horizontal trading range boundary lines. Now, that's a mouthful out there. There have been 22 monthly closes at approximately $96.95 out here. If the U.S. dollar, and by the way, uh, folks, U.S. dollar index bottomed in April of 2008. You know, there's folks out there that say a strong dollar is not good for the stock market. B.S. That is all before Steve showed you this chart out here. And there, there is actually no statement that could be further from the truth if we just simply take a look at the mere fact that the U.S. dollar index bottomed out here in 2008. I guess the question is, do you think the U.S. dollar index is moving higher or lower? It just continues to make a series. This is a monthly chart. Higher highs and higher lows. And once it clears this 96, 94, it's headed to 101, and then to 106. I think long term, emerging markets are not a great investment based on the correlation with the U.S. dollar index. Folks, have a great weekend. Thanks so much for being here. Stay tuned. Your favorite polar bear, he's up next. Tom O'Brien, 3 to 5. I'll be back with you on Monday afternoon. Take care and have a great weekend.